Yuta Fuji is officially pro. Massive congratulations, Yuta. That is really exciting. And this is his new pro model freestyle shape. And it's really interesting because it's a bit big by freestyle standards. And it also looks just like a popsicle deck when you look at it straight on, but it has ridiculously mellow concave. So it's really interesting and I'm really excited to talk about it and mostly who might like it. But before we start, I want to make my relationship with Waltz very clear because I am good friends with the co-owner of Waltz, Mike Osterman. And more than that, what you might not actually know is that I've been working for Waltz for the past couple months. Mike hired me to help him plan, edit, and post all of the short form content that Waltz has been doing recently. We've been working really hard to make a bunch of trick tips and to also create content that sort of demystifies freestyle and freestyle tricks. I'm probably, obviously, not sponsored by Waltz, but Mike did send me this deck and he sent it to me because we have been talking about it for months. We've had enough conversations about wheelbase, kick angle, fingers of flat, width, and concave drop that it could make your head spin. But I think that's what makes us such a good team. Mike loves designing and making skateboards and I love testing them out and seeing how those designs materialize and affect skating. So, so that's basically what I'm going to do today. I have a list of tricks that I want to try on the new Utah shape. I'm just going to go through them. I'm going to see how everything feels, how everything feels, yeah. And the first thing I want to talk about with this board while I warm up is symmetry. Now to me, the greatest strength and weakness of any skateboard is whether it's symmetrical or not. And that's simply because how symmetrical your board is offers two very distinct experiences and very distinct advantages and disadvantages. Utah's pro model is symmetrical, which means I can do all the footwork that I want to and my board's always going to be facing the right direction. Say for example, I wanna do a under flip back to tail on the Bixby. Now, that's way more comfortable on the nose of the Bixby for me compared to the tail, which means if I wanna get a good one, one that I'm used to, one that I'm comfortable doing, I'm going to have to do a couple walk the dogs to get into that position. That being said, that's also the greatest weakness of this board is that I don't have one end that has certain tricks that are a little bit more comfortable on it. I don't have a flat nose to Pogo and Casper off of, which would be more comfortable. I have two of the same exact kicks and I have to skate them exactly the same. So while it's its greatest advantage, in my opinion, it's also the greatest disadvantage. So it really just depends how you skate. I personally like the symmetry. Next up to consider is the concave. Now this board does look incredibly flat on camera, but effectively it's not a massive change from the Bixby and it doesn't feel flat to me at all. It does have that tub concave, which means right down the center of the board is a flat pan and then the concave comes up around the edges. So there's a flat spot right here for your foot to shuffle around when doing footwork. And then the concave starts later on. Effectively, this board is really good for footwork. Between the tub concave and the long wheelbase, you just have a very comfortable, stable platform to dance on. Now on to size. And this is funny because after skating the 7.6 Bixby for so long, I was determined to have my next board be much smaller. And then I ended up on this big boat. This deck is 29.35 inches long and 7.75 inches wide and it had two effects on my scaling switching up from the Bixby 7.6. First of all, rail tricks were a bit scary. I just felt really high off the ground and while my feet felt stable, I didn't feel like I could move the board around as easily. 
Also, the board just moved slower and I found that I needed to exert more power in general. Everything just took a little extra time. Endovers, smoothies, rail flips, finger flips, under flips. And that was mostly because my muscle memory is so tuned to the big speed, which is a little smaller and a little lighter. And it's actually weird because on paper, the difference is minuscule. It's only like 0.1 inch longer and 0.15 inches wider. I have no idea why it feels so big, but it does. So I think it's a mixture of having my muscle memory tuned to a slightly smaller board and then just a very strong psychological component, which made me feel nervous when I was in rail. And that basically just means I have to adjust to using more strength in my tricks. And that's going to be a theme here. Because you see, the next design feature of this shape is that the kicks are wider. It's basically like skating two Bixby tails. And for me, that meant that any trick rolling off of the kick was met with a little extra resistance. Finger flips, rail flips, under flips, even Casper's just felt a little different. You fight against the squarer edge ever so slightly. And it mostly meant that I had to use a little extra strength than I was used to. They're both totally possible. They're just gonna take a little adjustment. On a positive side, the square kicks did make for a more solid place to balance in, both for Casper and truck stand. The tails do not tip back and forth as much as a rounder design would. I didn't realize it at first, but the more I skated it, the more I noticed just how solid it felt to land in truck stand and Casper. Next, we have wheelbase. This is a long freestyle board with a long wheelbase, and it makes for a very stable surface. Utah's shape is a solid land, especially for rolling tricks, and one of my favorite tricks, the fakie big spin, just felt amazing. If you don't believe me, just ask me. But big spins feel so good. In all seriousness, rolling tricks and shove it variations, kick flips, they all feel really good on this skateboard. And moving on, the last feature I really want to highlight on this deck is the mellow kick angle which in theory should make tricks like Trucks and the Caspers where you are on the tails easier. Easier than a popsicle shape and perhaps even easier than the Bixby. And while I cannot say that they're easier than the Bixby, I didn't actually notice a massive shift. However, the clips speak for themselves. I was getting some really good truck and Casper tricks. In general, this kick angle is very comfortable for truck and Casper. However, your skill in these tricks is going to play a much larger factor. This probably won't suddenly make you Casper beautifully. That's not something the board can do for you. And the metal kicks finally bring us to Ollie tricks. Now you can do all of your favorite Ollie tricks on this board. However, the mellow kicktails are not an Ollie Trick's best friend. I did find my foot slipping straight off the nose a few times. If you're skilled at them already, you should be fine, but if not, this might not be the most fun board to learn Ollie kickflips or heel flips on. And lastly, the final thing I noticed about this skateboard is that it had just a little bit of extra flex. So I never noticed the extra flex when I first started skateboarding. I did not notice it until I went to do a no-handed truck stand. But after I did notice it, I paid more attention and found that the board did feel a bit more flexible in an interesting way. If you push on the nose of the Bixby and Utah's shape, they actually flex to the same degree, but Utah's board just seemed to move a little bit faster. And I didn't notice the flex anywhere else, just pushing off to do a handed truck stand. And in fact, once I noticed it, I kind of liked the flex. The tiny give made bouncing through walk the dogs or landing on the board a little bit extra comfortable. So what's the verdict? To tell the truth, the first two days I skated Utah's shape, I absolutely loved it. I was having so much fun and I was excited to be on a brand new board, but then the reality hit me of just how much my consistency suffered on a few of my favorite tricks. So for maybe three or four sessions, I was um, disheartened. But after that, I think I started to skate to the strengths of both me and the board combined, and I started having a ton of fun again. I got some sick new tricks and got back a few of my favorites as well. 
I absolutely love that it's symmetrical. I think this deck really excels in comfort for truck dancing, caspers, rolling tricks, and footwork. So I'm gonna stick with the shape for those exact reasons. I wanna put some really heavy use in it, see if I can finally adjust the rest of my favorite tricks, and then I'll probably try a mini. <laughs> 